We don't consult on any aspect of advantage play because, first of all, we think it's legal, and if they're giving you information, you should be able to exploit that information any way you see fit. It's not cheating. The Nevada Supreme Court has ruled it's not cheating, so we will not consult on methods of attack for, for a casino. Not at all. So you think that if a player like yourself uh, does the work, puts in the hours, learns how to count the cards, learns how to deal with all the distractions, learns how to put it all together, that's fair play? That is 100% fair play. And you know, just to be, be understanding, card counting is just one of the most basic concepts. And, and if, if your security person or your surveillance can't catch a 1-15 to 15 spread on a blackjack table, which is what it takes to get like a 1-1.5% one, one advantage over time, then... They should find a different profession because if, if a guy's been that you know Ben Affleck, the, the genius that he is, walked into the Hard Rock a couple of years ago and you know bet one hand of one hundred and then three hands of twenty thousand dollars. I mean, <laughs> if you if you can't catch that, then you're an idiot. Then you need to go out and you know bury yourself in a hole in the desert. That's the key, right? You wait till the count is right and then you put the oh, big for, bets out that, there for that particular play. Yes, but I mean, I did a study on this. Something like only one in forty-seven thousand people has the ability and patience and put in the work to count, and only ten percent of those people have the necessary bankroll to to withstand the legal swing, the the, the swings that you're inevitably going to go through. So let's take Tropicana for example. They had five million people walk through their their casinos last year. So. You know, one in forty-seven thousand. You do that, and then you do the ten percent. So you're looking at. Uh, we can actually do the math on that. Would be five million divided by forty-seven thousand, which is one hundred and six people times ten percent. So you're looking only at ten, ten and a half people that can beat you. Let's say eleven people to round up for whole numbers. So are you going to go ahead and sacrifice all that revenue by half shooing people? You're going to lose, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars. For that, you know, for every additional round that a blackjack table deals in blackjack, the net profit over the year is about one hundred twenty thousand dollars. So, for each additional round that they deal, they get make an additional one hundred twenty thousand dollars. So, why would you go ahead and reduce the time of playing by reducing where the cut card is placed? You know, and you're going to cause more shuffles, and that's wasted time. So, it just doesn't make any sense to me. I don't know how many times you know the topic of blackjack comes up, and inevitably someone, uh, or maybe two or three people, say, "Yeah, I count cards." Yeah, you can count cards. That's fine. I mean, but yeah, but can you? Can you do you understand it? <laughs> right. That's the difference. And you don't want to apply it, and to the point of where you know you're not making foolish decisions, and you know, decreasing your chances of winning to go broke. It is not easy. It takes months and months and months of studying and learning and understanding. And then if you want to do a count card, anybody who has, you know, you, you have to have at least, I'd say, a $25,000 bankroll to make a couple grand a month. Wow. At least. And, I mean, even then, you're playing eight hours a day. I mean, how many people want to do that? Yeah, I mean, if you've got a nine-to-five job, which tough, you should try the, you know, the eight-to-forty-dollar dollars grind or the five-to-forty-dollar grind of an Atlantic City player. I mean, it's just, it's exhausting. The financial swings are know, traumatic, violent, and enough to draw, try the boundaries of your own sanity.